everyone. Welcome to our Team Peer Results call today. Thanks for joining us live or watching the recording. We hope you had a fun Christmas and a happy new year and getting back into the groove of things. Um, so we are excited to kick off this new year. We have a special guest today. Um, so I'm going to introduce her. But before I go into that, we have a couple of announcements. If you guys um, didn't check out the surge last night, here's a few things to know. So Super Saturday is January 9th, this Saturday. So check out the location. Yeah, excited. Everyone's excited. Um, January 9th in your location. Um, they have on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you can check it out in your local area. We'll post the link in the group. Um, Cafe Latte, January 11th, Shakeology coming out. So that's a big one whenever they launch a new flavor. Um, the Success Club trip for the 2017 is going to be to the Dominican Republic, an all-inclusive re resort. Yeah, <laughs> start dancing for that. That's exciting. Um, and yeah, and so those are the main announcements that we have for today. Um, but we're excited to have a special guest, like you say. Her name oh. is, um, oh, we have a question. When are they coming out with the Cool Challenge Group app? You know, I haven't heard a specific date. They said last fall, but I haven't heard the date. Do you, do you know Paige by chance? I know. I actually was just talking to somebody over at corporate and asked, and they were like, mm -mm -mm. so I don't know if that meant they couldn't say, or okay. I didn't get an answer. I want to okay. know. Yeah, they, they said last fall, so I'm guessing any time now. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll keep, keep yeah. you posted. Okay, cool. So I'm excited to welcome Paige. Um, she is awesome to take time out to talk to us today. So she is a mom of two from Oregon, and she's been a coach um, for just over three years now. She's um, a two-time elite coach, and she's helped four of her coaches become elite coaches, which is pretty awesome. And she's a six-star diamond coach. So she's going to tell us a little bit about her story and then just some tips for us. Like, um, what are your best tips on what you've learned over the time of being a coach? So thanks for coming. Welcome. Awesome. Okay. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. Um, I was kind of laughing when I was writing these tips because I feel like it's, they're so just like simple and easy, which I think is a good thing because then, you know, it's not like this isn't some crazy rocket science can't figure it out. Like it's just so simple, which is great. So I, as I was writing him, I was like, gosh, I mean, I hope somebody finds this helpful. I just feel like it's, but then I thought, no, you know what? This is the stuff that I appreciated to he like hearing when I was new. So I hope that, you know, you guys get something out of it, but um, <clears throat> I was going to share a little bit about, my story just so you kind of know how I got started um, and I apologize anybody in Oregon if you have been at a super Saturday and you've heard my story I'm sorry you're gonna hear it again um, but I'll keep it I'll try not to get too crazy carried away with it um, but basically so I my husband and I have been together for almost 12 years um, married for nine and he we had kind of a crazy life he played professional baseball for almost about seven years um, and we just, we did that whole crazy traveling life, moving up and down different teams. It was, it was intense. Um, it was fun, like definitely, you know, different lifestyle that not many people get to experience. And so we were grateful for that, but it was hard. It was a really hard, it was a hard life. I mean, he, it was all the ups and downs and kind of not ever knowing where home base was. And, you know, we're from Oregon. Our families are both from Oregon and we're really, really close to our families. And so that was a hard life, just kind of always being pulled away and, you know, not knowing where we're going to be next. Um, and it got to a point where he just kind of like, we just saw the writing on the wall. It was like, this isn't really going the way that we want it to, um, you know, for as long as we hoped. So we kind of made that decision. We prayed about it a lot, but we made the decision to hang it up. So he retired and that was very scary because we didn't know what we were going to do next. So he basically got drafted out of college to play. And so he still had a year left if he wanted to get his degree. So we came back home to Oregon kind of scrambling like, oh my gosh, what next? Um, we had a little, a little cushion of savings. And we, you, if you guys, you know, you know how quick that can go when there's not constant income coming in. And so we kind of blew through that, even though we, we were being smart, you know, we were never like crazy spenders, but 
it's just life. And we were, um, we kind of found ourselves in a place of, oh boy, what are we going to do now? Um, we had, we own a little home and we had, we were forced to move out of it. I mean, if we hadn't, we would have lost it. We were getting behind on our mortgage. Um, my husband had like five jobs. I mean, he's a, he's a hard worker and he, it, he would leave the house at like 4am. He'd get home at 11. He'd be doing baseball lessons and I mean, it was crazy. And, um, and we had a, we had a little girl, she was three. And at this time I found out I was pregnant because it's always such perfect timing. <laughs> Whoops. And, um, so we were scared and we, we moved in with my family, which my parents, I mean, they're amazing. And of course they let us come stay with them Well, we kind of tried to figure out what we were going to do. Um, and I had my cosmetology license, but I, you know, I had a child and I was pregnant and I, my dream of becoming or of being just that stay at home mom to raise my babies was kind of getting a little bit diminished there with this whole, Oh my gosh, I think I have to go back to work. What are we going to do? And how are we going to put the kids in daycare? You know, it's all of that kind of like unknown. What are we going to do? Scary. Um, we're living with our parents. I had to get on government health care. And I think one of the, the craziest things about it all was just that such a dramatic, you know, here he is playing professional baseball. People have this idea of what that is. And now here we are like rock bottom living with my parents. He has five jobs. I'm on government assistance. I mean, it was a bad, bad time. So we, um, I mean, we were always constantly praying like for some opportunity, something to come up. Um, and we got a phone call from some of our good friends that we had met through baseball saying, uh, you can come take this job. It's an amazing job. And it was, it was good money and it was a solid, you know, stable job. But the catch was, it was in Texas. So of course my husband and I, you know, first reaction is, oh my gosh, no, no, that is not, you know, baseball's over. We're done leaving our family. Like we want to be home. This is what we want. But then after kind of sitting on it for a few days, we kind of realized like, okay, maybe this is uh, God providing for us because we were, you know, we've been wanting something and here it is. And so how are we really going to say no? So we, um, we did it. We, we took the chance and we just upped and moved our family to Texas. Um, that was probably one of the hard, I mean, that was harder than retiring baseball because this time it was like, we don't know how we're going to get home. We don't know how we're going to get back. So, um, that was a very scary thing. Well, at this, around the same time, about probably two months before we made the move, my best friend, some of you might know who she is, Stephanie Chico. She's amazing. Um, she, she had come to me cause she had just had her third child and I had just had my son and she was like, Hey, I'm going to do this challenge group. You should do it with me. We can lose our baby weight together. Cause she knew I was kind of depressed and you know, not knowing what we we're doing. Plus I had all this baby weight to lose. And I was like, uh, yeah, I cannot afford that. I mean, we're about to make this big move, you know, to Texas cause we're so broke and we need a fresh start. And, but she kept talking about it and I was like, Oh, oh and by the way, I didn't even know what Beachbody was. I thought P90X was like some kind of computer software or something. Like I, I really had no clue. And I, that's what I started with. And I hate it by the way. It's so hard. Um, I mean, I ended up liking it, but so I didn't know what this was, you know, she just kept talking about it. And I was like, okay. And I talked to my husband and I'm like, all right, you know what? My birthday's in November. It was right around the time I'm going to save my birthday money because my parents always gave me birthday money. And I said, I'm going to buy this challenge pack and I'm going to do this. And so I did it and I, I love the Shakeology. That was kind of the thing that made me be like, okay, I'm kind of into this. Um, and so Stephanie decided to become a coach and she was, and by the way, Stephanie, we met through baseball. Our husbands played baseball together. So she was going through a very similar thing. They were kind of, baseball had ended and she was like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? So she kind of dove into this coaching thing where I was not looking at coaching as this business opportunity. I was just like, okay, well, she's doing it and she's my best friend and she's telling me to do it. Maybe I'll just get the discount from, you know, on my shakes because I really liked them and I didn't want to stop drinking them. So that's kind of how I fell into coaching blind, no clue what it was. Um, which is probably a good thing. Cause if I knew everything, I'd probably be like, yeah, no thanks. So I signed up and, um, you know, a couple months later we made this, this move to Texas and she, um, I told her cause once we got to Texas, I kind of realized like, Oh wow, this is a big, like my kids, it was a big deal. You know, my daughter changing schools and just 
being away, like we felt like we just ripped them away from the grandparents. And it was hard. So I told Stephanie, you know what, coaching, it's great and all, but it's not for me. I'm like, I'm, I don't have time. Like, I need to just help my family kind of adjust to this big new move and this, you know, these changes in Texas here. So, of course, she understood. And she's like, you know, just if you ever change your mind, you know, of course, I'm here to help you. And so I appreciated that. But um, I just I wasn't into it. And I went inactive, which I didn't realize at the time, but it made her lose diamond, which I feel terrible about because I was one of her emeralds. Anyway, um, we kind of joke about it now, like I've made it up to her, but still, it was kind of funny. Like I didn't understand, then I was just like, no, I can't do that. So um, we had been in Texas for a couple months, and I, of course, missed my family. I mean, my husband and I, like I've said, we're really close to our families, and I was just sitting there one day, and this was kind of like, you know, some people say they have like their aha moment. This was kind of mine. I was sitting there, and I was like, oh my gosh how did we get here? Like, I just was looking out the window and I'm like, how am I in Texas away from my family? And how am I ever going to get home? Like, how long are we going to do this? You know, it was like, just kind of that, ugh, everything I think, you know, it had all settled the move of the kind of the excitement and it's new, but then it was like, oh yeah, no, I don't want to be here like for the rest of, I don't know how long. And so I, I just sat there and I was bawling. I'm like, how am I ever going to get home? And, um, my husband, the job, like I said, it was really a good job. So that was another thing I was kind of scared about is I'm like, how are we going to leave that? Because what in the world would we find, you know, back home? Um, and then it just, it was like, oh my gosh, it was like something just said, hello, <laughs> like, remember what Stephanie's doing? I had seen her post, you know, every day on Facebook and she would talk to me about it and how awesome it was. And I saw, and I knew that she was starting to earn a little income. And I was like, you know what? I don't even know what this takes. I don't know what it is, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this and I'm going to get my family back home. And I called Cor my husband, Corey, and I was like, okay, I'm going, I'm going all in. I'm going to get us back home and I'm going to do beach body. And I don't even know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do it. And he, from that moment, I mean, he's been so supportive. He was like, okay, do it. You can do it. Um, and so I texted Stephanie and I remember I was like, I'm back. And she knew exactly what that meant. Like I was ready to roll. So from that moment on, it was like, I always like to say I went all in. Like it was, that's all I was focused on. It was like, I didn't care about anything else. I was going all in and I was going to make this work. Um, and so I had made this, I made two goals. At, like basically that week I sat down and like made all these goals. And one of them, the big one was I said, June, 2014, I'm going to match my husband's salary. Um, and I wrote it on just a little yellow sticky tab and I put it up on my bulletin board and I stared at it and I still have that, but I stared at it every single day. Like I looked at that, like, that's what you have to do. Focus on that. And, um, that was so two years. I mean, I knew it was going to take some time, but, um, and I knew it was a lofty goal. You know, I mean, like I said, he, he was making decent money, but I was like, I knew I had to push myself and, and make it like very scary for me to, to do it. So, um, that two years, I just, I went all in and that June I was actually starting to out earn him. And then I was like, okay, uh, if I did that, I'm going to have to make another huge goal. So I said like eight months from now, which from then, which would have been, um, the summer. So June, or um, like July, August, um, 2015, it was, I think that, I don't know, I might be getting my date so wrong, but I just said from right now, I'm going to, I'm going to say next summer, I'm going to move my family home. And, you know, that obviously I knew what that meant. It meant I would have to be earning enough for him to not have to get a job right away when we got home and to to pay for the move and, you know, have a cushion and just all that. And it scared the crud out of me but I was like, I can do this. And so that was last June. What is that now? I don't know, seven months ago. Um, but we did it. We, I moved my family home and my husband retired. He does not even work anymore. I mean, he could if he wants, but we kind of have this thing going now where, you know, he just helps me with body and we're full time beach body and he helps me with the kids and we have, we can do basically whatever we want. So that's, um, that's pretty much my story in a nutshell. So it took about three years. Um, and 
so when I, I think just the biggest question I get is when people say like, what do you mean go all in? You know, like, what does that look like? Like, what do you do that means going all in? So that's where Shannon said, okay, well, give me your top five tips. I'm like, all right. So for me, this is just, when I look back at my three years, this is kind of the things that I just feel like really stand out that I find important. And this is what I tell my team over and over again and what we kind of, you know, this is what we do. So I hope it helps a little bit, some of you. Um, let me get that pulled up here. Okay, so my first one, um, it's kind of funny. It just seems so self-explanatory, but it is be a coach to yourself. So, and like I said, it seems straightforward, but I think, because I've done it, I think that this is one of the quickest ways that coaches can just get derailed and kind of lose sight of everything and not have their business work is when you're just forgetting to be a coach to yourself. Um, and when I say that, you know, I mean, you take the time to grow yourself and work on yourself, which starts with your personal development, you know, obviously three vital behaviors, um, getting your workouts in and drinking your Shakeology. And it kind of goes back to that thing, like how can we help others if we aren't helping ourselves? You know, I always say to my team, please secure your oxygen mask before assisting others. It's like, I mean, I've heard that all over Beachbody and it's so true. Um, you know, you've got to work on yourself and grow yourself to be, to, you know, best help other people. So I just think being a coach to yourself, don't let that kind of get pushed back. I know it's easy. It's easy to be like, I, I don't really have time for my workout, but you, when you kind of think about it as that's part of your job, which is awesome because it keeps you accountable. I mean, that's it. Like you've got to do that. If you're being the best coach for yourself, you're going to be able to help other people. Um, number two, this is my favorite one. I think my team gets so annoyed of hearing me say this, but show up every single day. No exceptions, no excuses. Um, you have to show up. On the days you don't want to show up, you have to show up. Um, you know, we all get in that funk where we're just like, I don't have anything to post. I don't feel like posting. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to look at another thing that has to do with Beachbody. I mean, I get it. Like I've been there. There's days where I'm just like, well, Beachbody. But, you know, if you're keeping that, your, your big goal and your why, and you're looking at it and you're visiting it each day, and if you're going back to number one, continuing daily to be a coach to yourself, you're going to have things to post. You're going to want to show up because you're going to feel inspired, right? Like when you read personal development, you get inspired because you see coaches all the time. Like they'll type something and you're like, that was really awesome. And then you're like, they're obviously doing their PD. So you know how that is. Or if you're working out, you're feeling good. So then you want to talk about it. You want to share about it. So um, you have to show up, but it all just goes hand in hand. You know, be a coach yourself. That way you have a reason to show up. If you're slacking on the first one, it's going to be easier to kind of not show up. So that's a big one. Um, and, you know, like I said, when you're working out and you're drinking your shakes, you feel amazing and it just kind of naturally pours out and you want to, you want to tell people about it. Um, if you're, like I said, not showing up every day, kind of like treating this like a hobby. I know you guys have heard this before, but then it'll pay you like a hobby, you know. Um, it's, it's just there's kind of no... I haven't really seen a really successful coach who just sometimes shows up, you know? So if you're kind of like a sometimes poster, I mean, poster like on social media, you know, then it's just going to kind of sometimes work and you're not going to feel like you're getting in that groove where it's really growing and growing. Um, also, even though sometimes you don't want to show up because you feel like nobody cares or nobody is interested, it's, that's so not true. And I know you guys know this. People are always watching. The people that you would least suspect would come to you, they come to you and they're like, I need help or I want to do this or I want to challenge or whatever it is. And you're like, oh my gosh. And then when they tell you, it's because I always, you know, you posted this, you posted that. And you're like, somebody's always watching. So it's so important. Um, I mean, I have coaches who wanted to give up because their posts got crickets. Well, we've all gotten crickets all the time. You know, I still do, but I don't care. You know, I just have to keep showing up and keep doing it and know that if it can help one person, it's worth it. So show up every day, even when you don't want to. Um, number three is be the best coach on your team. So basically outwork everybody. And I don't say that like, to be like, ooh, 
like competition. I just mean work really hard so that, you know, you know, when you go to bed at night, you're not like, I probably could have done a little bit more or, you know, re regretting that you didn't put in all the effort that day with your workout or, you know, whatever it is, like just be the best coach on your team and be the coach that you want. I love that too. Like if, you know, think about sometimes like we'll have a little assignment at my team, like write down the top five things that you wish your coaches would do. And then everybody does it and it gets them kind of fired up and they're like, I wish they would da da da. And then I turn it around and I'm like, do you do all those things? And they're like, Oh, <laughs> so, and I mean, I'm guilty too, but you know, that's just kind of a fun one because then you see, okay, I could be doing a little bit more. Um, and then also again, like, you know, if, if you're going to, if you want this to pay you well and be a stable, steady income, then you have to act like a CEO and CEOs are the best of the best. You know, they don't take days off. They don't slack. They're there, they show up and they, they're the best on the team. So, um, you know, it, this will work and it'll come together with time. With um, it'll grow. So those are just things that you kind of have to keep in mind. Um, number four, rolling right along here is be real and be you so nobody likes perfect you know like nobody can relate to that um i think people kind of just go uh that's not real and they just probably scroll on by but if, and you guys know if you have ever posted something that's like raw and honest it does that not get like the most attention and you're just like wow like that was hard to post but dang like people are digging it like because it's real like people want to see real i mean do you think i wanted to post that i was on government health care and lived with my parents and like was in this terrible situation no it was so embarrassing but just like you guys hear through the company turn your mess into a message and just put it out there because somebody can relate somebody can always relate and somebody is going to see your story and be like oh my gosh if she can do that I can do that. And just kind of being real and, and vulnerable and putting yourself out there gives people hope. It's really weird, but it does like, you know, you're going to put yourself out there, which is so hard. And sometimes right before you hit post, you kind of want to throw up, but somebody's going to look at it and be like, Oh my gosh, this is exactly what I need because they don't know if everything's always sunshine and rainbows on your Facebook or whatever. They don't know that you've been through struggles or they don't know, you know, anything, but you have to show them like you're a real person. You have struggles, you have this, you know, you've had hard times. Um, and just, and be real. Like, I know that's hard and that's why everyone always says, just get out of your comfort zone. But it's so, it's so true. I mean, it, it just, um, it attracts people. Um, and I mean, I think it kind of attracts the people you want in this business because the people that need it the most, those are those people that, you know, maybe they are at rock bottom so they can relate and they're like, I need something right now. I need hope. And, and you're giving them hope. I always tell my team, like, think about this as like a gift you have for somebody because that's what it is. You know, if people want to say, uh, what are they doing? Beach body, this, that, so whatever. And I mean, you just got to ignore that because this really is a gift. I mean, this can change lives. It's changed so many lives. So you have to just remember that, you know, block out everything else. And remember at the end of the day, like this is something you have that can change people's lives physically, you know, um, financially, emotionally, everything. I mean, it's changed my life in ways I never even knew could happen. And so you have to share that, you know, like don't hold back, be real and put yourself out there because it's this gift that can change somebody's life. And you have to remember that. And I feel like if you do kind of think about it that way, it gives you a little bit more confidence to put those posts, you know, those vulnerable posts out there. Um, so last one, number five, um, this is so kind of silly, but it's keep going. Do not give up. Keep going. Because the only thing that puts me here and other coaches who aren't in where I'm at in the business yet is that I didn't give up. And I, and that is the one thing that sometimes some of my coaches, you know, they come to me and they're just like, uh, I just can't anymore or it's not working. And I'm like, you know what, if you're going to quit, you're going to have to live with the regret that in a year, two years, you see where all these other coaches are. You're going to have to think, 
where could I have been if I would have just kept going? So that's a huge one. I mean, there were days I wanted to quit and Stephanie would be like, nope, don't do it. You cannot do it. And, and that's just what kept me going is just knowing like, okay, yes, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. Some days it's so hard, but you know what else is being hard? Being broke and being on government assistance and not knowing how you're going to pay your bills. That is hard. So you kind of have to pick your heart. You know, it's like, keep going. Just don't give up. Don't stop. Um, you guys have an incredible thing to offer people. And like I said, it's a gift and you've seen it change thousands of lives. And so if you want to be one of those people, just do it. Just don't give up. Keep going. <laughs> That's it. Awesome. Thank you. You have an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. Awesome. Can we um, have a few questions? Yeah. Okay, cool. So if you guys have a question for Paige, um, post in the chat box or unmute your line. Um, she's pretty amazing. So this is the time to ask questions. <laughs> no. Okay, Ashley. All right, so how did you develop your story? I mean, obviously, it's what happened to you in real life, but how did you find the way to put everything together and develop that? Um, I really, like you said, that's just kind of what happened. Um, and it's funny that you asked that because I almost didn't even realize that that's kind of what was happening as it was going until when I wanted to do this and I was like, I'm going to go all in then I kind of realized like, wow, look where I've been, look at our lives. And now because of Beachbody, there's something's different. I have hope. My family has hope. So I just kind of switched it to that. Okay. I'm going all in and it's because of Beachbody that I'm able to do all this. If, if Beachbody wasn't there, I don't, you know, my story would just be, wow, we still live in Texas and this really sucks because we're away from our family. Um, so I think it just kind of naturally came about, but definitely having, because, you know, going to Texas, moving away, being broke, that had nothing to do with Beachbody, but we would probably, you know, still be in Texas if it weren't for that. So um, I think just kind of relating it all up until Beachbody, you know what I mean? Because we'd, we'd either still be in Texas, or if we hadn't moved to Texas, we'd be in Oregon, probably just still, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. Um, and so, I mean, I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but I think just any, you know, I mean, I have, like, this is a good example. I have a coach who came to me, could barely afford the challenge pack. <clears throat> in fact, she had told me no twice before about becoming a coach. Um, and I just kept saying, okay, but I think this is something that could change your life. Like, I really wish you would just try. And she was like, we can't afford it. We can't afford it. Well, they had been same thing. I mean, government health care, food stamps, every, you know, you name it, they were struggling. Um, and so it's almost like that part of her, oh, by the way, now she's like a 14 star diamond and she out earns me, but <laughs> it was just awesome. But she, you know, that wasn't because of each body, but she uses that. She uses that like, this was my life. I took the chance. So I think that's kind of one of those things. Like if you do, you know, whatever's happened before, even though it didn't have to do with Beachbody, but now because of Beachbody, it's like you took the chance. So look how my life has changed. You know, like I don't even want to think about where I'd be if it weren't for Beachbody. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So here's a question from Dusty. When did you become a coach and how long after you became a coach did you go all in? So when I became a coach, I was, like I, I said, I kind of didn't really know what it was. So I wasn't like, you know, those coaches that you'll sign up that are like, okay, give me everything. Let's do it. Like, I definitely wasn't that because I didn't understand it. Um, there was no Zooms. There was no training, new coach, nothing. I mean, nothing. Like, we, I didn't know what I was doing. So I signed up. Um, and it was about six months after when I signed up, the move to Texas, that kind of breakdown moment of how am I going to get my family home? It was about six months. So I signed up and then six months later, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. So it was about two and a half, a little over two and a half years to, you know, to date, um, that, that I am where I am. So two and a half years it took to grow it that like that. 
been worth every minute of time and sacrifice. Awesome. Um, so I, I think I said three, so it was two and a half years since you started, right? Yeah, because I signed up and then I didn't actually work for, you know, it was about six months in that I, that I was still a coach. I mean, I, like I said, I was inactive, but I was a coach. So. Okay, cool. Just make sure. Yeah. Right. Awesome. Okay. So from Cindy, what, what, what was, is your biggest struggle in your own business and how did, or do you overcome it? Um, I honestly am not a huge recruiter. So, and I mean, I feel like some people will get really excited when I say that because I, you can grow a really successful business and not be a huge recruiter. Um, I, I try to each month I'm like, I'm going to do, you know, double what I did last month. And I am just not, I'm not a strong recruiter. So I've kind of accepted that, but it doesn't mean I settle. Like I still try to, to do better each month with recruiting, but, um, I, I don't know. I probably average two a month. And, um, I, it wasn't always like that. I think at the beginning when you kind of, get all those people that you know and then get into it and it's really exciting but now it's that's definitely my biggest maybe not so much struggle but just my weakness is recruiting um I like the whole team building thing now I kind of feel like that's where I can thrive with my team I love it but recruiting I'm not that good at it. <laughs> but so you know what you don't I mean you don't have to be I, you you have to hit success club but um, yeah, I just don't think you have to be a crazy recruiter to be successful, you know? Great. Awesome. Any other questions? Uh, I want to thank Paige for yeah. being here. It's been awesome. I really love your story. Where in Oregon are you from? I grew up in Oregon. Um, we, and thank you, by the way, are you going to be at Super Saturday? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not in Oregon. I'm in Idaho right now in a little town called Chubbuck, Idaho. Oh, okay. Because I thought if you were, you said you're from Oregon. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, we are from, I mean, my family, I grew up right like Beaverton and then my husband grew up in Aurora. So, um, it's Aurora. It's maybe like 20 miles north of Salem. Um, oh, that's good. That, that's about where I went to college in the uh, oh, Valley. About yeah. Oregon College of Education. No, now Oregon State University. Oh, okay. that was 40 years ago. So <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, we're we now we live like right in Beaverton. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want to say that the the thing that um, I really got while you were giving this presentation is that I've been trying to think what is going to impress people. What should I say about my story that's going to impress people? And what you've done instead, and I know I need to do, is you're very real and you're, you're stressing what's important to you instead of stressing what you think will be important to them. Yeah. And, and even though I'm saying, like, that's not, that's not what I would say, everything that you said rang so true and so much to your heart but of course you're going to have people who, who relate to that and follow you and, and say, man, if she can do it, I can do it. So thank you. That has, that has changed my mindset just a little bit today. So good. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's, I think, and that's another thing is I think you guys have heard so many coaches say it before, but like, if I can do this, anybody can do it. Like, no, you know, I don't have anything special. I'm, there's nothing about me. What it is, is it's time and consistency and the fact that I just didn't give up. So, you know, if you are putting in the work every day and you're doing that and you're showing up, um, then that's also what your team sees. You know, that's another thing that kind of goes along with that showing up is, well, then your coaches are going to see that and they're going to be like, oh, well, if, if I want that, then I need to do that too. And then, you know, you don't feel like you're like harping on them because you're just leading by example and they see that and they're like, cool, that's what I got to do to be successful. Then I'll do it. <laughs> just, it works. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you got something out of it. That makes me happy. Great. Um, any other questions or comments? Okay, well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much, Paige. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Sure. Yeah, we, 
Um, we like to do a group picture on our calls. Are you okay with that? Yes, we do too. Okay, cool. So I'm going to pull it up. If you guys um, don't have your camera showing, make sure your camera is showing. All right. Make sure I get everyone. Okay, ready? Smile. One, two, three. Okay, well, let's do one more just to be safe. Okay, one, two, three. Awesome. Well, thanks so much again, Paige. You are amazing. We really appreciate you and your time. So thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Bye. Have a good day. See you later. Bye-bye.